A Very Royal Narcissist, Part 6. The series returns to Meghan Markle, the gift that keeps on giving, and, as I continue to update uh, earlier articles by providing them to you here on YouTube, with a view to bringing everything up to speed with additional information about current behaviours, it is useful to provide these episodes to enable you to see past events and analyze those behaviors to understand the relevant aspects of the narcissistic dynamic. The content of this video was first dealt with in January of this year and it is worthwhile again looking at the uh, events that are covered in it for the purposes of aiding your understanding of the narcissistic dynamic involving a famous person. In October 19, there was an interview which forms the basis of the content of A Very Royal Narcissist Part 4. And this was a revealing interview that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry gave to the British television, uh, gave to British television rather, during their visit to Africa. During this interview, reference was made to the potential for the royal couple living away from the United Kingdom. We now know that that has come to pass, nevertheless. Let us look at what was said at the time. I had earlier explained that the interview raised inevitable questions about the future of their lives in Britain, with previous reports suggesting they had once been considering an extended stay in Africa or more time in the Duchess's home of America. That suggestion amounted to threat and loss, separation and isolation. Isolation is a common response of the narcissist. The narcissist unconsciously perceives a threat to his or her control where lesser or mid-range, and therefore this threat comes from other individuals asserting control over the narcissist's prize asset, i.e. the intimate partner primary source. The intimate partner primary source caters to the prime aims of, of control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits better than anybody else in the fuel matrix. The narcissist then seeks to maintain control over the IPPS by smearing those people who are perceived as threatening the control. Control is also asserted by monopolizing the time of the IPPS and keeping them away from the perceived bad influence of those other individuals and preventing them from interacting with these people. It does not matter if the other people are family or friends. This is done always under the auspices of it being the right thing to do for the IPPS victim and or because the other people are nasty, unfair, etc. So that the IPPS is separated and isolated from the very people who may be able to assist the IPPS victim and thus in turn threaten the narcissist's control of that IPPS. The narcissist will instinctively, where a lesser or mid-range narcissist use this manipulation in order to keep control and remove the IPPS victim from perceived threats. Prince Harry was asked about living in Africa as a consequence of speculation about living away from the United Kingdom. He stated, I don't know where we could live in Africa at that moment. We have just come from Cape Town. That would be an amazing place to be able to base ourselves. Of course it would, but with all the problems that are going on there, I just don't see how we would be able to make really as much difference as we want to without the issues and the judgments of how we would be with those surroundings. I think it is a very hard place to live when you know what is going on, and then you are again slightly disconnected from it. This is the logical response to the prospect of living elsewhere, and Prince Harry would clearly have preferred to remain in the United Kingdom. But his statement is as a consequence of making remarks which would accord with what the Duchess wants, whilst enabling him to also maintain his own views. Of course, you may be familiar with the fact that you will have said similar comments in order to placate the narcissist 
and thus you actually avoid, although you didn't realise you were doing this necessarily, you avoid threatening the narcissist's control. At that point in time, it didn't matter whether the royal couple actually did move away. All that mattered was that the intermittent absence and combined with threat, which is often used by mid-range narcissists, would be used for the purposes of reinforcing control in the here and now. That desire for immediate control now, not in the past, and not in the future, being a central aim of the narcissist, either unconsciously, where lesser of mid-range, or consciously, where greater or ultra. Back in January, media outlets reported that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced that they would step back as senior royals and divide their time between the United Kingdom and North America. In a statement released by Buckingham Palace, the couple said that they planned to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. They said that they intended to work to become financially independent. The BBC reported on the matter and contained comment from former Buckingham Palace press officer Dickie Arbiter, who suggested that Prince Harry's decision demonstrated that his heart was ruling his head. Mr Arbiter told the BBC the massive press onslaught when their son Archie was born might have played a part in the decision. And he compared the move to Edward VIII's abdication in 1936 in order to marry twice-divorced American Wallace Simpson. That is the only other precedent, but there's been nothing like this in modern times, he explained. This step, which I had originally foreshadowed in October 2019 and explained through analysis as part of the ongoing manipulation by the narcissist to separate Prince Harry from any influence which would threaten Miss Markle's control over her intimate partner primary source, only serves to reinforce the ongoing manipulation and devaluation of Prince Harry. It is, of course, dressed up through facade management as carving out a progressive new role within this institution. But it is telling that there is no recent precedent in modern times for this behaviour and that commentators once again fail to see it for what it is, a manipulation. A growing body of comment in the United Kingdom demonstrated feelings being against Meghan Markle and this was manifested in a particularly vocal way in the print media. This largely critical and adverse comment amounts to challenge fuel to Ms Markle. The comments and coverage are about her and therefore they provide her with fuel, so that is not the problem. But because the content is critical and adverse, it challenges her unconscious, unconscious sense of superiority, sense of entitlement and lack of accountability, all amounting to a threat to control. Her narcissism then caused her to try and assert control over those challenging her, and this then resulted in, initially, a charm offensive seeking to win people over. This failed. Therefore, the narcissism shifted to an alternative assertion of control, the utilisation of pity plays, which was done through the interview that took place in Africa. For instance, this manifested as, when she was asked about the pressure that she was under and the brave face the couple put on, she hesitated on camera before admitting the situation was hard. Pity play. She said, I don't think anybody could understand that. She said, in all fairness, I had no idea. The then states, which probably sounds difficult to understand here. When I first, my, first met my now husband, my friends were really happy because I was so happy. But my British friends said to me, I'm sure he's great, but you shouldn't do it because the British tabloids will destroy your life. And I, very naively, and I'm American, and we don't have that there, thought, what are you talking about? It doesn't make sense. I didn't get it. So, yeah, it's been complicated. Appearing to hold back tears, she said, not many people have asked if I'm okay, but it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. Uh, these comments manifest pity play, blame shifting, turning on the waterworks. It's important to remember the distinction between Prince Harry becoming tearful and Meghan Markle doing the same. He's empathic, and, that, and whilst he does have strong narcissistic traits, he is not a narcissist, and his response is seen through the prism of being empathic. His is a consequence of emotional empathy for others and his vulnerability, and that's why he's been ensnared in the first place. Uh, Prince Harry undoubtedly makes mistakes, and that is a consequence of 
his narcissistic traits coming to the fore when there is an erosion of his empathic traits. But he is not a narcissist. He doesn't act in a way which is done to assert control. Meghan Markle's response is occasioned by her narcissism and the inherent need, although she doesn't realise this, for control. There's no emotional empathy because she's a narcissist. Instead, her response arises because her narcissism dictates that turning on the waterworks is the appropriate response to appear to care and to garner sympathy, sympathy being a form of fuel, and thus allows the assertion of control. The pity plays, however, fail to win people over. Ms. Markle failed to assert the control that she required, so her narcissism caused her to move to a different form of manipulation. This was again an unconscious, instinctive response, and she then moved to threat and loss, namely, mention being made of potentially spending time outside of the United Kingdom. I commented that the couple may not move away. However, it's evident that her manipulations failed to have the desired effect, and because of her total need for control over her environment and everybody in it, she has had to, through her narcissism, move beyond threat and loss by suggesting a life outside of the UK and prolonged visits outside of the UK, such as the recent one to Canada, and instead implement an extensive departure from the United Kingdom by announcing the shared arrangement. Her attempted manipulation failed to sway opinion in her favour. She didn't assert control over popular opinion and the press, and therefore that continued to threaten her control. She's therefore salami sliced through further manipulations by causing Prince Harry to agree to this revised role. Prince Harry, unable to recognise what he's dealing with and in the throes of his sustained devaluation, will, as an empathic individual, be seeking to please and accommodate Miss Markle and thus has agreed, driven by emotional thinking, to this step, which is virtually without precedent. Such is the hold that the narcissist has over him. Since Miss Markle has been unable to assert control over the establishment and the medium and popular opinion in the United Kingdom, she's beating a partial retreat, one of the three assertions of control, withdrawal. In reality, what we're seeing is her narcissism realising it can't assert control in the UK, and therefore, rather than continue to fight a battle that cannot be won, it will cause her to achieve control by no longer seating, seeking it. She moves elsewhere. She perceives a more receptive environment, and thus one easier to control, in North America. Her narcissism caused her to think that she could control and conquer in the United Kingdom, but despite the charm offensive, pity plays and threat and loss, it failed, and thus she shifts her focus to an alternative environment. Prince Harry, controlled by her, may well have had reservations about moving, but in the grip of the narcissist and clouded by emotional thinking, and you will have experienced similar situations to that, he has then agreed to the shared situation. At the time, I wrote, what is likely in store is what is touted as a shared arrangement will become one where the Sussexes spend more and more time in North America if that environment proves conducive to a benign environment to control for Miss Markle. And slowly and steadily, the salami slicing will continue so that the Sussexes spend the majority of their time in North America. They make North America their base and the United Kingdom becomes a place which is visited rather than is their home or even a shared base. I first wrote this in an article in January 2020 and now we have seen how that has come to pass. I explained back then that if North America proved conducive to Miss Markle's control, she would continue to exert her control over Prince Harry, and then he would face the risk of being disengaged from, because ultimately he will have served his purpose to Miss Markle, and should one of the disengagement triggers occur, Prince Harry will be dispensed with and doubtless replaced. There is no doubt that Prince Harry was in devaluation at that point in January 2020, and indeed remains in devaluation. He won't have wanted to move to North America, but he's been conned into doing so, doubtless persuaded and pressured through a range of unconscious manipulations used against him by Miss Markle to suggest that North America is a better home for them, read instead a better environment to control. Desperate to keep his family unit together, desperate to keep the peace, Prince Harry, already having experienced a rift with his brother, whom he was once very close to, has allowed himself, unconsciously so, to be steadily isolated from his support networks, so Markle is better able to control him through this manipulation of isolation, and the result was the new arrangement that arose in January 2020. I'm sure that you have experienced similar behaviours. 
accordingly. What had occurred, and has come to pass since, has showed the steady erosion of Prince Harry through the assertion of isolation, and moving him, as a prized IPPS, even though in devaluation, to an environment which has proven far more conducive to control, and something which future episodes of A Very Royal Narcissist will be analysing and explaining to you. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.